Welcome. I am Ravi Tangri, and I am absolutely delighted here to have uh, Michelle Ray with me. We're, what we're going to be exploring today is a word possibly that's been, I think, has been overused because I cringe whenever I hear it, is pivot, but we're going to approach it from a different direction. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Ravi. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. So tell me about this. When you're talking about rethink, uh, respond, rebound, let's just talk about that together as, uh, as a concept. Why is that so critical right now? Well, you know, the way that I look at it, these are three elements of resilience and also it's all about mindset. And like you, when you talk about the word pivot, I know it's been so overused. And if we continue to do to the way that we all have been forced out of our status quo right now, disruption yep. has happened as disruption always does. Uh, sometimes we expect it, but in this particular case, of course, it's everybody out of the blue. So because of that, as I said, we've been forced to look at a situation that we weren't that wasn't a, of our own making and now find a way to rise above and what we've seen over the past few months are many examples of individuals as well as organizations that have found an opportunity in an extremely difficult situation and all of those individuals and organisations, not to diminish the tragedy and and uh, and shock that many families and, and millions of people around the world have experienced, have said to themselves, look, we're here and we've got to find another way. We've got to find another way out. We've got to find another way through. We've got to find another way to create certainty within uncertainty. So it has to start with our mindset. And, you know, when I think of you, myself, many people that we know that, of course, we are now, you know, adjusting to this new normal and, you know, we're doing things that we never expected that we were even capable of doing before. And that's been the case, as I just said, as companies that have reinvented themselves and found a way to be serving humanity in this time. So how did that happen? It happened because they looked at how they could rethink and reassess the situation. So, Michelle, you've done a huge amount of work on leadership. How is it that this has emerged as a real focus for you? I mean, certainly that what's happened with COVID has, has driven a lot of this, but, but I think this is something you were already exploring this sort of mindset before. Absolutely. I mean, it's all, my, you know, my next book, which is well underway, uh, keeping the title under wraps right now, but part of it is looking at how leaders are going to survive in the future. And as we just said, everything has changed. So this change has only accelerated. It's not as if it wasn't happening before, but it's made, it's, it's very clear that leaders have to look at their entire approach and make a decision as to how they're going to do things differently, let alone why they need to do things differently. And I think, you know, one very big example of this is all around the fact that you've now got literally millions of people thrust into a situation where they're working remotely, not out of desire, but out of necessity. Okay. So, so I think one thing that's really key here is that you were you. Mm -hmm the word resilience is under all of this yes why yeah. is that so critical today for because because what we want to explore especially for individuals how can they rethink respond rebound why why is that resilience so critical well resilience is the cornerstone of our psychological survival and we all have i believe resilience dna this has been proven time and again in history, time and again with individuals that have overcome tremendous adversity. And how have they been able to do it? They've been able to tap into their memory because we store a lot of, we store a, 
events in our memory. We, we store them in every fibre of our being. So there have been situations that we know that we have experienced in, in our past adverse situations. And as I said at the beginning, we found a way to rise to those challenges. That's what resilient people do. And they recognise that if they can find those experiences and tap into their memory, tap into their physical, psychological memory of these experiences, that's how they're able to make inroads and, and be more resilient right now. Wow. Okay. So that's fascinating. So in terms of actually building techniques that allow them to tap into that ability. Absolutely. And, you know, one, one really big example uh, that I actually mentioned it in my book, Lead Yourself First, there was a lot of research done after 9-11 and people who went through, you know, the post-traumatic stress disorder and, and um, you know, suffered tremendously uh, after that event, lost family, et cetera, and looked to their support networks for help and also within themselves to become more resilient. And uh, Psychology Today has published a number of articles on how those individuals who, who were able to do that and realised that they had that resilience within them, the way that they managed uh, those situations, that situation specifically, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, they were able to do it because they knew that they had that capacity already. It was within them. And a lot of research that was done uh, Shone, shone a light on that at the time and since that time. It's interesting because in, implicit in that you said that was one of the things was they did, they knew to reach out. Yes. And to yeah. reach within the both of them, which... Absolutely. I, I, and I, I can see that the both are necessary, but there's a lot of people who are in positions of power who don't necessarily reach out or even tap in to those deeper resources within right and that you know that would really serve them well if they made those choices for everyone regardless you know uh you know my work and you know my position on leadership leadership is in the title Lead everyone has the ability to choose to be the leader of their own life and you know i'm passionate about that it's a message that i carry to people no matter what their position in any organisation and that's how we need to see ourselves as the leaders of our own lives and that's why, you know, I know that for some people, you know, it sounds like a lot of psychobabble but we really do, you know, what choice do we have? We can either bury our heads in the sand or we can decide, you know, I know I may not be happy with this situation and indeed that's understandable and that's true of any adverse situation but what am i going to choose to do yes and and that's why i believe that those choices are i can rethink i can respond and then i can rebound and if i can illustrate it another way ravi sure. let's imagine that we are going along this highway of life this highway called life we go through many ups and downs many peaks and valleys so we're cruising along this highway of life and all of a sudden, bam, some sort of event occurs, some, some, some sort of shock, some kind of change or disruption. So this is typically what happens. You know, some people will go like this. They will, well, they will actually, you know, sink lower and are jolted, as I said, out of that current reality. Now then, th then what can occur is that, we start to make adjust, adjustments and we, you know, can come back to operating on the plane that we were operating on previously or we can start operating at a higher level than we were before, which means that we are in a higher and new state of consciousness. But there are some people that even when that disruption occurs, they're still operating at that same level that they were before. And... We have to ask ourselves, you know, is that going to work? I think perhaps not. And, uh, you know, we have choices that we have to make. So life is full of the ups and downs. Life is full of peaks and valleys. And indeed, we do, it is natural good to go through a valley. And some of us have been feeling like we're in the valley right now. 
But that's yeah, yeah. where we have to start to to think, uh, how can I frame this a little bit, to reframe this situation? You know, it's funny, you, you said that it may sound like so much psych psychobabble, right? Yeah. But the thing I found, I'm still a scientist, okay? That was my first career, and I still think that way. And yes. to, science doesn't mean necessarily you can explain exactly everything, but science says that if you do A, you can consistently get B and you can prove that correlation. Uh, so to me, I don't care if it's woo woo, if it's psychobabble, if you can consistently show a correlation between doing something and getting a significantly uh, improved result. Yeah. Then I'm sorry, that, that makes total sense to me. Well, exactly. And we've got, as I said, examples abound of companies that have rethought how they are going to approach this current situation. You know, we've got companies manufacturing masks. They never thought that they would be in the mask making mm -hmm. business. We've got distilleries that are making sanitizer. That wasn't in their No, who would have thought? Exactly. And the list goes on and on. So let me let me just make make the point about how we three how we can rethink and how I've illustrated this point to leaders and and anyone in anyone at all can really look at it this way. Okay. You can see what I have in my hand. Yeah. yeah. This is something that I learned from, from a dear friend of mine by the name of Lillian Zaza. And she talks about Appleosophy. So I want to make sure we give credit where credit is due. I absolutely love this. Anyone can use it. It makes total sense. So when you think about this and you think about if you were a farmer, for example, in Washington State or in the Okanagan Valley in British yep. Columbia or in Tasmania, Tasmania, Australia, what would this represent to you? That would represent your livelihood. Exactly. Yep. All right. Well, now think again. Imagine that you mean. Sorry, you Sorry. jumped out for a second. Imagine that I what? That you are a teacher. <laughs> a teacher. Well, uh, two things. It, it'd be a symbol of what, what your students, you know, the, of your connection with your students. That, that, or, or it could be a gift that your students have brought you. Exactly. You see, power of perception. How about this, Ravi? You are... Either Adam or Eve. <laughs> uh, uh, it's temptation. Right. Exactly. And now you are a worm. Oh, wow. It's home, food. Exactly. So consider this. Who is right? <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. Perception exactly. is what it is. Exactly. So your perception is your reality and no one can argue with your perception. Someone else's perception is their reality and no one can argue with their perception. You know, Anna Nin once said, we don't see things as they are. We see them we as we see are. see things as we are. Exactly. You know, think about it. This is what I mean by how we need to lead ourselves into the future, how it's it behooves us to, to look at how we perceive situations and what our reality actually is. Think about how, you know, people perceive other people, how they, you know, how we have biases and generational, cultural, diversity, everything. And this is why if we don't open our minds, you know, we're just going to stay stuck. The famous poet Anonymous Woman said, Many an open mind should be closed for repairs. <laughs> I'll vouch for that, yeah. So rethinking is reassessing and reconfigurating what is going on between our ears. And, again, that requires a different mindset. And it's all about the lens that we use to view the world that creates specific outcomes. So it's about how we give meaning to things. Absolutely, Ravi. That's it in yeah. a nutshell. Yeah. And, 
you know, the, it's even beliefs. I, I have um, one of the examples that I use is, you know, I always yeah. often ask a group I'm talking about beliefs. I mean, how many have beliefs that are slightly different from when you were a teenager? Yeah, good point. Right? They're not absolute. They're not etched in stone. They change over time. Yes. yes. And yet yes. people think that what they believe is the truth. Exactly. And that kind of thinking, there is no way when you think about the fact that we are now in the digital revolution is not going to work if we don't keep evolving over time and continue to shift and continue to collaborate with other people who know a lot more than we do to bring them into our sphere of influence, to utilise their strength, to utilise their knowledge. It's just so important. In fact, it is going to be essential for survival. So, yeah. The, and, and, and even going beyond what's happening with COVID, if you look more precisely in the last week with the things that have happened are happening with the Black Lives Matter. Right. It's about changing the meaning. I, the, I see such an opening mm -hmm. for people mm -hmm. who, from people who are not of color to say, okay, the, what is this privilege? What am I not seeing? What is this that's invisible to me? Yes, and it's they're definitely. opening to, you know, they, they can't experience what people of color do, but they want to at least understand the stories so that they're changing that meaning. They're doing that rethink. Exactly. The exactly. And, uh, and yes, some of the, the most incredible, you know, posts and, and articles and, you know, people that are, you know, realizing that it's about opening our minds and, we don't know what it's like to walk in, in someone else's shoes. And so, you know, this this tragedy has, has made people, again, reassess and rethink their, their biases and their beliefs and their preconceptions. And uh, it's really, it's I mean, it's going to, it, I, let's all hope that it's going to create a fundamental shift in global society as a result. Yes. Hopefully there's something yes. sustainable coming out of this. And, Absolutely, you know, Ravi. Across. So Absolutely. then if if we are on a journey of taking leadership in ourselves, in our own life, then that first step is to be able to rethink, to say, what is the meaning I've given to the world? What is the meaning of, and that's really where, honestly, it's where stress comes from is when things are different from what you expect. Right. Right. And so everything's been different from what we expect the last couple of months. So. What is the meaning I've given to things that are making yes. me hold on to old patterns? Exactly, Ravi. Exactly. Okay. And I go into a lot of detail about that in, in my book, Lead Yourself First. And, you know, that, that, that idea of, okay, so now I'm at the crossroads and I have choices to make. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to take a different road and I'm going to reevaluate what I've thought things are about up until now, then my next choice is to respond. Hmm. Now, I'm sure many of us have heard of the idea of either responding to life or reacting to life. Yes. And there is a big difference. You know, a lot of us right now, including myself, when this event that occurred three months ago and has escalated, definitely put a lot of us into reactivity mode. You know, why is this happening? And, and obviously... It's, it's just been shocking to so many of us. Yes. So reaction, understandably, is emotions-based. Responding to a situation is values-based. Okay. So, for example, if I have a value of believing that, you know, a, a, of believing and advocating that change is good and change is an opportunity, maybe that's a better way of putting it, that change can be seen as an opportunity, then I'm being thrust into change. If otherwise my values are disconnected and, and out of alignment, if I'm saying I can't stand what's happening and I hate this and I'm not going to surface for the next six months, or I'm going to say, well, wait a minute, maybe if I truly value that... Oh. We just, we just lost you for a second. If I truly value. If I truly value that change is a credo that I live by, am I ready to embrace it 
and am I ready to respond to it and move out of my reactivity? So again, our values are driven by our beliefs and uh, our philosophies of life. And so if our actions and our, and our words and our values are out of alignment, that causes dissonance and stress, as you said earlier. Okay. So, yeah. and, and again, the reacting is a lot of times you're saying that, that you're re reacting the emotionally so that it can be in conflict with your internal value system. You do things that you might not otherwise do. Yeah, you, it's like saying, I believe in harmony and I believe in resolving conflict, but at every turn, every opportunity, you're the first one to get involved, the first one to react, the first one to argue. Then you completely, your values and your actions are completely out of alignment and there's disconnection. And the same thing goes with this situation right now or or any any change, is it a challenge or an opportunity? So, you know, we, we can make a choice that way in terms of how we choose to respond or react. Okay. I, can you, I can give you another example. When you think about, and this one has been very well documented, uh, but it's a, it is a great example, when Uber came into being. Mm -hmm. And how did that happen? It happened because two gentlemen had an idea and they thought to themselves, we're standing on the snowy street in Paris in 2007 and they couldn't catch a taxi. Now, they... They were wondering already about the, op the the way that they could integrate technology to create what we know today as Uber and how they could make that happen. But that particular circumstances, that particular circumstance that they found themselves in served as an opportunity to catapult that idea into a new reality, forced all of us into a new reality. So what did all the transportation companies, taxi companies, limo companies, what did they do and what have they been doing since, in one word? Reacting. Yeah. So that there was... They can't operate this way. This isn't right. We've, we've exactly. paid for our licenses. We've done... Well, and, and you can understand and, and acknowledge their point of view. There's just a contrast in terms of how these individuals started this company and responded and responded to a need in the marketplace for easy accessibility, you know, instantaneous response, ease of use, and made it happen right. and left the else scrambling, trying to catch up. Right. And reacting. And, <clears throat> so let me ask you about this. For me. Yes. One of the keys for me that, to move to be able to respond mm -hmm. is my meditation practice. Yes. Because, it, and I'll tell you this last three months, if I didn't have that, I would be wackadoodle. I hear you. Um, and, and there are times when I, I can I feel the emotion and, and I know I have to just go sit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are times that I've gone two, three times a day to into meditation, you know, because so much has been happening or my reactions are there. So where do practices such as that come in to this journey with the rethink and the response? I, 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 I can see in the rebound but in these earlier stages. Well, I think that what and you've mentioned this to me before, Ravi, and I think it's all about energy. You know, it's you're taking an opportunity for yourself because you can choose to do what you need to do for yourself. You can control what you can. Yes. And that's also a very important point. So you're controlling that energy field around you and within you, which is incredibly powerful. And I think that that's actually, obviously, uh, a sign of resilient people, leaders, you know, people who are innovative, you know, people who don't, buy into the chatter and the negativity and that'll never work and, you know, what are you thinking? You you know, you're giving yourself an opportunity. It's absolutely energy and it's it's energy that you can manufacture for yourself, which I think is incredibly powerful and why you've managed to stay on an, on an even keel no matter how many times a day. That is absolutely valid and I respect that enormously and it's very useful. Yeah. 
It's, yes. and, and honestly, when you talk about energy, part of these last three months has been tuning in and listening because I know the first few weeks. Yes. I, and I think it's with a lot of people, I think we were in shock, but I did not have the energy to do much. I just wanted, I, I, you know, I was tired, go to bed early. I think a lot of people went through that mm -hmm. and I just allowed that. I wasn't yeah. pushing for, I did still work, but I wasn't pushing to get the crazy levels of productivity. But then as time went on and I was inspired, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, like, especially, uh, I know you and I've worked on a, uh, a project, one project the last little bit, and there's all sorts of things happening where I'm just like, going and I, and I actually have to scale back and say okay I need time to be able to go for a walk to do these sort of it but I am so in the energy is there so I'm following that in yes. action well I think that it goes without saying that the difference to you is what you have and what others have who are finding a way to rise above is self-awareness mm. you know there are there are people that millions of people that have it and millions of people that don't and they're walking around reacting to everything that's happening. But it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, what do I really think about this? You know, do I have any level of, of awareness that I'm contributing to the choices that I make and I'm contributing to the outcomes that I get? Uh, I mean, I, I know that I've experienced this right here, right now in this time. My calendar was completely wiped out of speaking yep. engagements. All of our story, right? All of us, every single one of us, hundreds of thousands of us, no doubt, and and other businesses, and you know, there's just the list goes on and on and on and on. But it's going to be very interesting getting to that last point. How are we going to rebound this adversity and this challenge, or this opportunity and this new way of looking at the world? So you know, I'm to accept it am i going to run away from it or am i going to change the way that i respond to it and i'm going to choose to do the last one and i can add a fourth one because we do have choices in life and we've seen people exercise the fourth choice ravi and that is that there are people that will continue to make themselves completely sick over this yes you know any stress we can accept it walk away from it respond to it or just go, you know, just completely resist and, and make ourselves literally physically ill from it. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, that's part of the concern is that there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot more uh, mental health uh, yes. challenges uh, coming out of this because I think the more that you try to resist, the yes. more that, yeah, yeah. And that's why the collaboration is so important. And when people are hurting and people need that need that friendly ear and we need people to understand where we're at, I mean, it's absolutely essential. Uh, I heard something or read something recently. I love looking at all the work of Gallup research. Yes. And uh, there, was a, there was an article that came out last week or the week before, again, giving very specific advice for leaders in terms of how to manage their organizations right now and one quote from that research that i that i really paid attention to was candor over charisma okay people are unimpressed as i said by ego and by position power what they really need now is for people to take a genuine interest in how they're feeling and to show that they care. And I thought that that was a great uh, one line about how leaders need to operate if they're going to be able to have people buy into what they're trying to do. Before we do anything else, we always need to pay attention to people's emotions because people will, for want of a better word, when I say buy into an I idea the emo emotionally they need to to connect with it before they're going to respond to it logically so we need to be paying attention to what people are feeling right, right. now the um so, so the, the 
the key is, I think, if you do the rethink and respond, mm -hmm. you create the space where you can rebound as to re as opposed to react, right? Yes, yes. Again, you know, numerous examples throughout history of individuals that have done this in highly adversarial circumstances. Uh, I'm not sure if you're a fan, Ravi, of a... Uh, you know, one of the best books ever written, best books of all time, Dr. Viktor Frankl. Man yes, absolutely. From, well, when did he write that book? And when did he, I mean, he started writing that book when he was in the concentration camp yeah, yes. during the Second World War. Now, there's an example, and one of my favourite quotes from his work is that one can choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. And we all have our stories. We all have challenges we've come through. But honestly, mm -hmm. I I don't think any can go beyond what he experienced. And yet he could say that. And he could say that. And he had the mindfulness and the awareness of exactly what he was do what he was dealing with. And I think another one of his quotes was something along the lines of, you know, they may try to take my body, but they can't take my mind. Yeah. So the power of the mind, and he was the first person to uh, to start the self-determinist movement in the world. Mm -hmm. So a shining example. Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it is that. It's, you know, it's, it's that you can't, your attitude cannot change unless you allow it, and let, a lot of people abdicate that. Yes, and yes. They, and they think they're helpless, but they're not. It is a choice. Yes. And I, and I know when I'm resilient, I can face the same situation and go, no. And when mm -hmm. I'm not, it's like. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I was very fortunate. I also had two incredible role models in my parents who lived and breathed resilience like no other people I've ever known in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them went through absolutely incredible challenges. You know, not only did they survive the Second World War, but they also, you know, lost their home, their business. I mean, my mother's health, she must have had 12 different health challenges and uh, every time except for the last one that she had absolutely no control over, which was acute dementia, you know, she always found a way and my father was exactly the same. And, again, it starts with your thinking. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if someone is... In a place where they're they're still feeling a little beaten up by this. Yes. What are some of the first steps that you think they can take to start to go down this journey of rethink, you know, respond, rebound? Well, and I know from some of the other wonderful guests you've had on your on your program that I probably share a similar philosophy. I think Again, as I just mentioned, it starts with that self-awareness. So understanding what you're feeling right now and, and giving yourself permission to feel it, I think that's the first step. Recognising that there are ways that you can channel that energy and, you you know, if you can find even 60 seconds or 30 seconds to start with to just sit with yourself and allow yourself to feel those feelings and not to fight them. I know that other people have said the same thing to me when I felt overwhelmed. So, again, it starts with the willingness to do that. And if, and if we don't have that willingness, perhaps there's other tools that we can use. Maybe we can write. Maybe we can make one phone call. Maybe we can talk to one person. You know, something, something that we can choose to do for ourselves, even if it's only briefly, just to start to move out of it incrementally, that's one option that we, a couple of options that we have. Now, with the, um, in, in terms of the responding, you know, I mentioned to you, mm. or the rebounding, I mentioned to you yeah. for me, I, I, I listen to my intuition. So, you know, yes. in the last two, three months, I didn't force this that first couple of weeks. I just, you know, I did make progress, but I just, you know, I, I didn't push. But then when my intuition said go, when I felt the energy, I followed it. How does intuition play into this? Oh, I think that's such a great point, Ravi. You know, because you're, well, you're very in tune with yourself. Uh, 
you know, again, not everyone has that capacity, but those answers are in there. And I heard one person once tell me, your gut is never wrong. So when you're feeling scared, you're feeling scared. When you're feeling whatever you're feeling, it's, you know, it's not lying to you. When you're getting a certain vibe about a person, it's not lying to you. It's telling you the truth. When you when you hear that voice long, when you're able to hear those messages of I've got to slow down, I've got to take it easy. So, you know, trusting your intuition. I mean, I know that this is a battle. I know that there are times where I have to ask myself, you know, when I'm writing my book and I'm struggling, what am I resisting? You know, what are the thoughts going on in my mind when intuitively I know that 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 stronger part of myself has a voice and has something to say to the world so I want to go with that part of my intuition and realize that that's what's going to to help me but there are these other voices that are out there doing push-ups you know trying to <laughs> slow me down and say no 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 all the little gremlins um you know there might be part of your intuition too but you can't necessarily unlearn those things in five minutes so I think that's a little bit unrealistic you know, it's a, it takes, it's a process. Everything is a process. Uh, I have a Jedi mind trick or two. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, you have the awareness, Ravi. That's the key, right? Yeah. So just starting with little, if we don't, if we don't give our permis self permission to sit still, it's very hard to find that intuition, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you need to be silent to be able to hear it because it's a very silent voice. It's very mm -hmm. quiet as opposed to the ah, the noise that goes on up here. So much noise in here and out there. Yeah. Yeah. The the interesting thing, though, about intuition is a lot of people say, oh, I don't have it. I can't. But, but everybody <laughs> says, oh, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I knew I should have done that. Right. They, they, well, excuse me. What the heck is that? But intuition. Hello. That's exactly what it is. You don't have to call it that if you don't want to, but that's what it is. Yeah, but they didn't listen. And that's fine, but yeah. that's an awareness that you have it. And then so the next question is without, and, and this is really important, not in a punitive way, not in a punitive way is to say, okay, what did I, what if I didn't do that and I knew I, I could have because the should is a very, nasty word it is what can i do differently next time what did i learn from that experience you know what did i learn from staying in that job for way longer than i knew i really wanted to i've been there who hasn't you know and what did i learn about being in that relationship that i can take into the next one i mean i think that's what every every situation presents itself for a reason mm -hmm. and uh you know that that's in my my view that's the way i like to look at it what can I take away from this and try to apply differently next time round to get me closer to what I really want? Well, I think you've given us a whole lot of things to take away here, Michelle. Thank you, Thank you so Ravi. much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank and, you. And uh, for if, if people are looking to uh, get a hold of you, your website's probably the best place to reach sure. out. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Ravi. Yeah. And uh, I, I truly appreciate this because it is so, what it does is it demystifies this whole, like I said, overused word of pivot. You can't just pivot like that. You need the time to be able to rethink so you can respond and then rebound, right? The, the, it, you need that space so the pivot is going in the right direction. Absolutely. And uh it, it seems to happen quickly when it does. But, well, I never, but it's exactly. because you allow that space to happen first. You would not be, as you, as you know, there is no way you could have told me three months ago that I could sit down at my desktop and start editing my own videos and adding music and special effects because I was telling myself that I, I don't know if I've got the ability to do that, but if I give myself the time, you know, now I'm excited about continuing to to do that yeah. and I didn't know yeah. it would but it was in there I just needed for it to come out <laughs> it is fun yes yeah. so, so the other yeah. thing I do want to mention to people watching this if you are an entrepreneur whether you are a solopreneur you've got an organization that's uh, working for you I'm working with a, another colleague of uh, Michelle's and mine David Guthrow 
and we are doing what's called a thought exchange. We want to find out what entrepreneurs need to excel at, to thrive in this time and beyond. Mm -hmm. And so the cool thing, that's the one question, only one question we're going to ask you. But the cool thing about thought exchange is once you answer that question, uh, your answer will anonymously be added to the pool of responses that everyone else has entered. And then you'll be able to see what other people have answered and enter information, uh, rank them, how yes. important they are. So that way we're going to see how entrepreneurs all over really see these issues and where they need to excel. So I will put the link to that in the comments of this, uh, but I would appreciate it if you are a business owner, if you'd take a few minutes to do that thought exchange and you'll be able to get the results, informations on that at that link uh, once we once we put all the data together, but please do take a few minutes to do that. Absolutely, Ravi, thank you. Yeah, so thank you again, Michelle, and thank you to all of you for uh, tuning in. And also tomorrow I will be back actually every, weekday in June at 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, noon Eastern, 5 London time. Uh, I'm going to be interviewing a different entrepreneur on their entrepreneurial journey. And so tomorrow I'm going to be chatting with Rhonda Scarf, who Fabulous. created an amazing business in an area where they said, you'll never be able to succeed there. Oh, so yes. we're going to dive into what drives her and what enables her to move past what people say is not possible. Excellent. So thank Excellent. you all. We'll see you, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. And um, we shall be off. Thanks, Michelle. Pleasure. Thank you.